The power of love is the power to know your true identity. Love is so powerful. Love is so real. It's not our love. It's God's love in Luke chapter three, verse 22. The father says to Jesus out of the waters of baptism, the father says, you are my dearly loved son. New Living Translation, you're my dearly loved son. You bring me great joy. The power of love gives us the power to know our true identity. This is what the devil's after. This is what he's always been after. He's always been trying to get Adam and Eve. He always tried to get Adam and Eve to doubt who they were. And then when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, what was the first temptation? If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus did not take on the devil's challenge because he did not have to prove that he was the son of God. He knew he was the son of God. The power of love, number one, brings you or gives you the power to know your true identity. The power of love will cause you to be able to begin your destiny. It says and he began his ministry. Verse twenty three, verse twenty two. You're my dearly loved son. Verse twenty three. And he began and he began and he began what he began his ministry. He began what he began his ministry. You're not going to fulfill fulfill your destiny until you understand the power of God's love gives you the power to the power of your true identity and it gives you the power to begin your destiny. You want to begin a new chapter in your life. It begins with the power of love. You want to begin a new family begins with the power of love. You want to begin a new business. It begins with the power of love. Boy, when you know the power of love, you just start attacking life. You start attacking fear. You start attacking anxiety. You start attacking worry. You start attacking sickness. You start attacking uh, debt and poverty and the problems that people are facing. And you start attacking anger in this world with kindness. You start attacking fear in this world with love, with faith, with boldness. You start you start attacking people's problems with prayer. You go after it. You're you, when you understand the power of love, you will begin to step in the power of your destiny. You know, the power of God's love will make you're my dearly loved son. Say, I am God's dearly loved son or daughter. I bring him great joy. Amen. You should say that every day. The power to begin a new life, a new chapter, a new season in your life is found in the power of God's love for you. Number three in Luke chapter four, verse 14, it says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and news about him spread throughout all the surrounding region. I want you to see a couple things here. The third thing I want you to see is the power of love produced the power of the spirit. Jesus after Jesus heard the father say, I love you, son. Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. And you know, the power of the Holy Spirit is the power of love. You know, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love because God is love. The Holy Spirit does not come to condemn you. The Holy Spirit comes to love you and leads you to repentance with his kindness, not his anger. And then it says and news about him spread. All the surrounding districts. Boy, the power of God's love is going to give us the power to spread the gospel supernaturally around the world. You know, Jesus didn't even ever talk about himself here, but he came in the power of the spirit because he understood the power of God's love. And then he had the power of the spirit. And the next thing that happened was news about him spread everywhere. You know, I want to get the gospel out to more people than ever. I want to see more people saved. I want to see more people delivered. I want to see more people set free. But I believe that that's only going to happen through the power of love, the power of God's love. And number five in Mark chapter one, we see God saying the same thing to Jesus It's Mark's version of this in Mark chapter one, verse eleven. You are my dearly loved son. The spirit comes and says, you are my dearly loved son. You bring me great joy. New Living Translation. You bring me great joy. And then verse 12 and immediately, immediately the spirit of God led Jesus, impelled him to go out into the wilderness. And that's where he faced temptation. I want you to see that the immediately after he heard about the power of God's love, immediately he went to face 
all of the temptation of the devil. And this tells me something. It says when you understand the power of the father's love for you, it gives you the power to face and conquer whatever life brings. When you understand the power of God's love, it gives you the power to face and conquer whatever life brings. Number six is found in Luke, chapter four, verse three. The devil says to Jesus again, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. But Jesus in Luke, chapter four, remembers what God spoke to him in chapter three. Jesus remembers what God spoke to him in chapter three. What did God speak to him in chapter three? You're my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. And what is Jesus able to handle when the devil comes to say, if you're really the son of God, you're able to you can turn these stones into bread. You say, oh, didn't you already say that? Yes, I did, because point number one was the power of God's love gives you the power to know your true identity. Point number six is the power of God's love gives you the power to remember your true identity. It's one thing to know it, but it's another thing to remember it when you need it most. And so is it, I'm repeating it here and for number six is the same as number one, because we need to remember every time the question comes, every time the enemy comes, every time we're wondering, we need to remember when it matters most. What do we need to remember? We need to remember our true identity. We are sons and daughters of God and nothing's going to change that. and Nothing's going to stop that and nothing is going to alter that. You can't change it. God isn't changing it. The devil can't change it. I can't change it. Nobody can change the fact that you are a son or daughter of God. You are a part of his royal family. You are a part of his royal mission. You are his mission. You are his purpose. You are his desire. What does God desire? It's you he desires. It's your family he desires. It's all your loved ones that he desires. It's all your enemies he desires. He desires to know the people he created and he has done everything he needed to do to get you to know him and all we need to do is spread that news. And number seven, I'll close with this in Mark chapter one. When God says in verse 11, you are my dearly loved son. And in the New Living Translation, you bring me great joy. I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. This one we'll have to come back to. But it's the power. The power of God's love gives us the power to be free. From. The addiction to approval. The addiction to approval. God says I'm pleased with you. God says I approve of you. That frees you from needing everybody else's approval. And frankly, it frees you from needing anybody else's approval. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse two, God says in verse one, he said, faith is this, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then verse two says by it, by their faith in God's love, by it, by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse two says by it, by the faith. What is our faith in the son of God? What is our faith in the one who loved us and gave himself up for us? Our faith is in the love of God and this very faith in the love of God. It says for by it, our faith in the love of God, by it, the people of old, the men of old, it really is applying the men and women of old gained approval. They gained approval. They gained approval. They didn't gain approval because they got all the likes on their Facebook post. They didn't gain approval because somebody said, hey, you're great. I really like your you know how you look. I really like your this or your that. Hey, no matter whether they liked your post or not, these guys didn't gain their approval from some behavior they performed. They gained their approval from God by believing in his love for them. And therefore they had God's approval by it. They gained approval. We don't need everybody else's approval when we have the father's approval. Let's stand to our feet and come on. Somebody thank God for his goodness in this place today.